Hi, I'm David Sidalny, creator of Stoto Studios' The Games of Hunger. Welcome to this behind-the-scenes look at how we made the parody cartoon. A lot of you have contacted me asking me to share my process and what goes into making a cartoon for YouTube. From storyboarding to final sound, we'll give you a taste of each of the steps involved. Hopefully it'll help answer all of the questions you've had and give you a better idea of how these cartoons are made. As well, it'll help you understand why I don't have any time left in my life to do anything. It all starts with an idea. Usually I'll be watching a movie and I'll get to a scene and I'll be like, I can parody that. So I grab my smartphone or a notepad and I jot down that idea. It's important to do that because if you try and sit there thinking, oh, I'll remember that, trust me you won't. Things will happen and you'll totally forget to do it. So just jot it down quickly. Once I have the idea, I start to plan it out using whichever creative method works for that short. Whether it be just doodling rough character designs or doing thumbnails of possible camera angles. If your short is very dialogue heavy, this is a good time to start jotting down ideas for a script. I then start to refine the character designs by drawing it over and over and from different angles using different expressions. This will help you a lot in the animation phase because you'll understand the character from all different angles. Next, I record the voice tracks. I used to do a lot of theater and acting, so this is nice because I get to revisit that side of me again. In the games of Hunger, there aren't a lot of scenes where you actually see the characters talking. So the majority of the voice work in this was a lot of panting, a lot of breathing heavily, a lot of eating sound effects. For the eating sound effect, it wasn't enough to just do chomping sounds like um, um, um. No, it wasn't enough. I needed to actually block my air passage as if he's pounding through food. So I literally had to eat my own arm. I jammed my arm into my mouth while doing sound effects just to give that kind of <laughs> to make it feel like my face was packed full of food. And then of course for the Super Mario character I just pretty much did the stereotypical Italian accent. Hey, it's a me, Mario! And just tried to push it as happy as I could. Hey, it's a me, Mario! For the announcer's voice I was trying to go for the Donald Sutherland character from the Hunger Games. I tried so many different ways and he's actually kind of tricky to get, but then once I was just goofing around and I realized I could get a bit of his goofy essence by dropping my mouth down and putting my tongue in the back of my teeth, it sort of gave him that low goofy little lisp he has. And it sounded a little bit more like Donald Sutherland. Welcome to the 74th Annual Games of Hunger, where our tributes will compete to the death for eternal fame and glory. The majority of the sound recording was done here in my office at home. This whole room is filled with hardwood floors so it's really echoey and it's not the ideal situation when you're trying to record clean sound effects. So I pretty much had to turn this place into a really low budget sound studio. A blanket is actually a very good way to absorb sound. If I'm at home and I have to do a quick recording, this really kills all the ambient noise in the room. I do plan on building a portable sound booth soon, because this is sort of inappropriate if I ever have to hire an actor or an actress to come over and do a recording. Now's where I start locking down my camera angles and rough actions using storyboards. I tend to keep these drawings extremely rough because it's only me referring to them. If I was in a studio environment, I'd spend a lot more time making sure they were very clear because there's an entire crew that has to use them. I use a storyboarding phase to work out the flow of the shots and what I need to see in each one. Once I get these done, I import them into an editing program and play with the timing of the shots. If it's an action sequence, the shots will cut much faster and may only be a few frames long. But then there are shots that really need to breathe to give people time to take them in and understand what's going on. Now that I know what's required for each shot, I can start drawing my backgrounds. I start off again with a really rough thumbnail drawing. I use this to get the composition right, planning for all the actions that need to take place in it. Then in, in any painting program, you do a really rough painting on top of that to nail down the color. This is the most crucial step to commit to the mood of the film. It's amazing how much information you can see without putting much detail in it. This is also referred to as a color key. The rougher you are with it, the more it doesn't suck when you have to make little adjustments or start over or try something new. Then I clean up that drawing and start adding details, and this is what I use as both a template for the final painting as well as the line drawing while I'm doing rough animation. 
Next is to finish up the painting, but I don't start from scratch. I sample colors from the thumbnail, so I'm basically just cleaning up my color key and making it more detailed. Now comes the fun part, rough animation.